Welcome to Synced on Air. I'm your host, Angelique Robb, and we are brought to you by Turf Set Radio. Today, I have a repeat guest on with us, Naylor Taliaferro. Now I'm getting used to saying your name. It, uh, it's a bit easier. <laughs> How are you, Naylor? I'm great. Thanks. You did a good job. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm impressed. Well, <laughs> you know, you have to say it a few times to get it going. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> So thanks for coming on. We're, you know, we've been prepping. You've been helping me prep for Sync Live and, um, you know, the the second version. So we had the inaugural version earlier this year in February. And um, you and I hadn't even met at that point. And you showed up to help to do Pod Row for the first time. Do you want to yeah. tell people a little bit about, um, yeah, what you started? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, you know, over over the over like the same time frame that I was in my lawn care business, which is going on my tenth year, tenth season now. This is the end of my ninth season, uh, or coming to an end, right? It's October. Right around the same time, I started social media, just kind of by accident. I stumbled upon it when I was doing research, you know, trying to go from a homeowner to a pro contractor. So I kind of stumbled upon that whole infancy of, of a, what we call now the community, the lawn and landscape community. There was a couple of folks out there making regular YouTube content. Their Instagram wasn't really as big at that point. I mean, it, it, it was big, but it was more like Facebook and, um, you know, YouTube. Snap. yeah, it was all about YouTube. And then some of the things yeah. started popping up like Snapchat and okay. li live video started becoming a thing like Periscope and Facebook live and then YouTube live. Okay. So all these things started like progressing, but at that very first time, it was really just YouTube and just some Facebook stuff, you know? So I was just learning whatever I could on how to be the best. And I, I found a few people, like I said, making content. And then I started kind of following along and then I wanted to create my own content, like within a, within that same year. So oh, it's wow, almost, that quickly. Yeah, okay. So, so yeah, like within that same year, like middle towards the end of that first year, I just started uploading stuff on my phone, you know, on, on YouTube and, and then just to connect with the few people that were creating content and all of the hundreds of people at the time that were following along and commenting. And cause I could sense that community and I just really wanted to be a part of it. And um, that's, that's just kind of where, where it just kind of took off from there. And it's just progressed into so many things it quickly progressed into me becoming one of like the, the founding, like, you know, leaders of the community and helping to foster growth and just always putting content out. And every time there was like a new social media platform or a new opportunity, I could see to grow the community with social media that's what I would do and 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 like a few years in it turned into events and yeah. you know I, I just started doing all these different events um you know whether it be meetups at different uh you know other trade shows things like that um and then it's now leading and other into landscape companies I yeah, think you, yep, you had yeah yeah, yeah. And, and now it's just kind of evolving into other things where I kind of be, have become like the event coordinator, like the, I'm the content creator and the the creative director for all these different events. So I just try to, I'm just a very creative person. I went to school for fine arts. So I, I have a very creative mind. I'm drawing, painting, sculpting, creating all that stuff. So it's kind of all interpreted itself, I think, through um, content creation, whether it be podcasting, YouTube yeah. videos, um, event coordinating, all, all of that is just, it really, it really brings joy to me. And I seem to have a knack for it. I, I have a, a a large network that I've grown over the years um, of just brands, you know, folks such as yourself, you know, that they're in charge of events to content creators like me, to other lawn landscapers that maybe aren't creating content, but they're following along, either listening, watching all the above. And it's all one big ecosystem, you know, one big yeah. community. Um, of course, not everyone's a part of it, but everyone that is, that's the online community within our industry. So Pod Row was something that I really wanted to do um, with a friend of mine, Paul Jameson, with the Green Industry Podcast. We we had kind of talked about it. Um, it's like kind of Super Bowl ish. Super Bowl has a thing called Radio Row, Radio Row, and it's kind of turned into a podcast row because podcasting is on a, a huge uh, wave of new popularity. It's been been around for a while, podcasting, but uh, it's kind of goes up and down with new new users, new waves of people getting into it. And so there's a lot of, a lot of huge uh, popularity with podcasting just everywhere, not even just, you know, with the lawn and landscape industry, but also mm -hmm. with us. So 
the radio rows kind of turned into podcast rows. There's a ton of people podcasting in like this huge space, you know, for the Super Bowl, like Super Bowl weekend. And they're like interviewing, you know, athletes and celebrities are all coming through. And so instead of getting on a radio station, they're getting on all these popular podcasts. So, you know, Paul and I were like, Paul was like, that would be really cool if we were able to do something like that at, at one of our industry trade shows or something, you know, and just kind of have like a, a radio row for podcasting. So I just called it pod row and tried to kind of formulate how that would look and, you know, start to build it out and, and, and find different, you know, events that we could go to and sync live was our very first one last year. <laughs> Yeah, very so, first and it yeah. was the first sync live too yeah you know? there you <laughs> yeah, go there you no go. that was really cool i mean you did have to explain to me what it meant to be right. on super bowl row and right, or, right. or whatever <laughs> that's why i kind of explained it for your audience just in <laughs> yeah. case <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, 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 yeah. but the general theme is just to get, just to get, uh, um, you know, several podcasters together and just interview all the guests, you know, the attendees, the speakers, maybe, you know, some of the vendors when we're talking yeah. about a trade show. So at Sync Live, that's what we did. We interviewed like all of the presenters, I think, or the majority of them, it majority. seemed like. Yeah. Um, and, and then different attendees that came because we were there. So like naturally we're like talking about pod row to our audience leading up to it. So people want to come and, and see us come to whatever trade show we're at and check that out as well. And they might get on a podcast. Some, some people are, aren't comfortable with that. They just want to kind of see us and see the show and, and, and all of that. But so just, yeah. yeah, so it's just like a big collaboration and we get a lot of great content. I learned a lot from a lot of great presenters that you guys had last year. And oh, I, I, I look forward to doing that again this year, Pod Row. It'll be bigger yeah. and better. Well, it it will. You know, our for our first event, I think it it went really well. And I think um we've learned a bit where we want Pod Row next time too. I think, you know, mm -hmm. we had you kind of at some <laughs> desk to the side yeah. or some tables right. to the side kind yeah. of you know not but, so but we made it aesthetically work. <laughs> pleasing <laughs> yeah but we made it work oh yeah. yeah oh it was great and it was great to have that that other dimension and for us that you know we were involved in running it so it was all a bit chaotic on the day you know you're trying to make sure everybody's happy and things like that right. but then we could go back and listen you guys did like a recap podcast as well after yeah. the event and talked about it and like oh wow okay you know I, I heard about your thoughts on that <laughs> you know, of yeah. course I, I talked to you in person as well but um it's just it's a it's a great way for people to experience it if they can't be there and and you know one of the things that we're trying to do is bring these really interesting either industry leaders or um you know speakers or um they have great ideas on what they've done in their business or products or services you know things that can help somebody that's making that's leading the way whether it's your own business or whether you have a big part of you know leading the way in the business that you're in we want to give you inspiration and um yeah i'm glad to hear that uh you met some new people and, and you guys did a lot of podcasting um, with all <laughs> yeah. of the different, all of our guests. And yeah, they, they were all very excited. Like I had a lot of people calling me afterwards going, no, I remembered one of the guys. What's the other guy? What was it? You know, I, they had recorded with two or three of you, yeah. you know, depending on who they were. And they're like, I forgot their names. <laughs> <laughs> their yeah. names. connect me up to them and um it, it, it's funny and then yeah soon after that we've started synced on air weirdly enough but <laughs> oh yeah that's right you, you started your own podcast i know we we, we, we uh you we inspired got you guys. us hey, there you go yeah. there you go <laughs> you're like hey we should start our own podcast well because you know really it's it's like you said it's, it's a great way to um, to, to not only connect and collaborate with folks, but it's also a great way to kind of recap after. I mean, it's just it's just a really it's it's like kind of part of the future of communication. You know, I mean, we've always radio has been the popular, obviously, for a long time now. So just audio is so much easier than necessarily like going on your social media app and looking at a post, reading something, watching some, a video. Yeah, it clip consumes or a long, you. Yeah. Whether it's where a you can drive and you can exactly. listen to audio. You can. Yeah. 
be on a lawnmower, for instance. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can safely work <laughs> and drive or just do stuff around the house, whatever, around your yard, you know, whatever it is, you can just put some headphones on or earbuds in and, and you can and you can listen while you work or, or, or dr drive or maybe you're flying somewhere and you can download yeah. an episode or an audio book. So this audio is definitely becoming more and more popular just with with the with the busier the busier the world gets, right? It seems like it's a lot easier to just pop something in to listen to and, and it's and on doing, demand. Yeah, like, and be hands-free. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Instead of trying to set time aside to read read something or watch something, as sad as that is, you know, we don't have as much well, time to do that anymore. I know. And I, I think but that you know, technology is letting us do this better. So we should embrace it, you yeah. know, and, and I told you this, I, I was like, cause it was our graphic designer, Caitlin, that was like, we should have our own podcast. She said that after Sync Live, you know, and I think it, it was the enthusiasm of having you guys there. And, and I was like, are you kidding? We don't, you know, when are we going to fit that in? We're, we're trying to do something new in the industry. It's, you know, it's, we're learning every day. You know, I am, I mean, my, I'm passionate about designing and constructing gardens. Um, so to learn the media world was very new and events, you know, which is why it's so great that you're helping. Um, and, you know, there's just so much to learn. But then I realized, and I, I think I told you this recently is like, well, actually I'm having these one-on-one -on -one conversations anyway, you know, like I just need to get it in my head how to right. do things differently. And um, it's funny because in our last issue of Sync Live, it just came out. We just got our copies um, earlier this week. And one of the things we have in there is change management. Like, how do you change things so that it's not so daunting? And, you know, it's like when Caitlin said that to me, I remember going, oh, my goodness, not another thing. You know, <laughs> we just finished this event. I can barely talk. I'm right. exhausted. I'm in Atlanta. I have to drive back to Louisiana <laughs> now. You want me to do something or us to do something new, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, sometimes, yeah, you just have to one step at a time huh? But, baby steps and yeah but you're embracing it now right you're 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 liking it and getting the hang of it right I really like it well I think I've always liked one-on-one -on -one conversations better mm -hmm. than like I I mean I love putting something together that's beautiful like our our publication um but I like to get that feedback you know so like even when you're looking at somebody on a video call you at least know that they're listening you know you you know it's a bit more um right relationship building you know you right. know that person better um and so i guess that's why i said earlier that i hadn't even met you before we you know i saw yeah. you at sync live but right. um or paul or jeremiah like you know yeah. so it's only over phone calls and videos and and it's great but i i really i like that deeper connection where you meet in person and yeah i mean the funny thing is like you always meet somebody after you, you talk to them on zoom and you think you're the same height and you're not when you meet them you're like whoa this is blowing my mind <laughs> that's yeah that's funny that you say that because that's how it is with youtube you know like whenever we go to an event we meet someone for the first time that we haven't seen in person but we saw them on youtube you know or yeah. social media we're like whoa you're a lot taller or shorter or this or that yeah that's how it was with paul he's he's a lot taller than I thought way back when I first met him way back in the day I was like dang dude I didn't know you're taller than me <laughs> so yeah that's kind I know. of it. and then some people are shorter than I thought I was like oh, okay I didn't know <laughs> yeah it just you you get a picture in your mind don't you yeah. so um and it's almost surreal when you see them for the first time like in person because it's like you're so used to seeing them in a two-dimensional format that when you see them live and in person it's almost like they're kind of like fake or something you know yeah, <laughs> like, you're is like this, this is isn't this the same person I've been talking yeah. to you <laughs> <laughs> right. It's weird how your mind does that for sure. So I could totally relate. <laughs> yeah. And I, I it's funny because similar to what you said about building a community, you know, that, you know, it, it's not just a magazine. It's not just a one off event. You know, what we're trying to build is a community. And I realized, you know, I've I've lived in different places. My funny accent is has rubbed off from being in Scotland for too long and you know I've 
everywhere I've gone, I've like either socially or work wise, I've tried to build that community. And, um, you know, when I think of what we're trying to do, you know, the publication is great. I love the publication. I love the process, but I prefer the process of putting it together because it's like reaching out to people and saying, hey, Naylor, can I interview you for this article? Or can I, you know, interview you and, and ask about this project? Or can I, you know, it's like, it's that deeper one-on-one -on -one conversation. So I like the process of putting the publication together because we're meeting all kind of cool people and finding out deeper stuff about them and then I like the the graphic design part and the the physical nature but what I don't like about it is that I want to have a conversation with people you know so it kind of you know mails out and you're like hello what did everybody think of that you know <laughs> like yeah. where the event to me was really seeing how you know, people were engaging and how, you know, you guys were over in the corner interviewing people and people going to the booths and having all these conversations, learning from different people. Um, just those connections are really, you know, what I, what I want this sync to be more about is opening, opening up, you know, building this community of people that are looking to do things better. Um, you know, more efficiently or better for the environment or, you know, staying on top of the better ways to, I don't, you know, it can be hardscaping or it can be softscaping or it can be the junction of the two or, you know, we talk about getting landscape architects, designers, construction, horticulture installers and maintenance all in the same room. And because I really think that, you know, we we have a challenging role working with living things outside in the weather with different underground conditions with different types of products products changing all the time or improving hopefully it's always in the right direction but you know there's there's always the goalposts are changing all the time going back to super bowl <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Tie that in. Um and and we want to we want to help those people that want to be involved and are, you know, I can see from, you know, the the lawn care side of things that, you know, some people will be more and more interested in hardscaping and softscaping and installing those those parts of, you know, the landscape. And then maybe moving into design and all that. We want to we want to always be showing business owners new opportunities because um, I think you know we we have challenges with Mother Nature and continually changing climate. Um, but yeah, snowstorms, you know, all these these complications. But um, you know, it, it's hard to keep on top of it when you're running a business and you're you know, you enjoy doing, yeah. the, doing the day to day and being involved. And, um, we're just trying to help with little tidbits here and there and show you inspiring people. Um, and so we have a lot of new speakers. Um, we have some of the same ones that we've had, um, in the beginning because people love what, what they talk about so much. So we're making sure to include, you know, people that have been here before and, you know, want to give back and want to, you know, help younger business owners or less experienced business owners. But also we have a, a lot of new speakers. Um, and I'm really excited because like the topics are very wide ranging as well from, you know, helping trees, you know, once you plant them in the ground, helping them survive for longer um, without much labor, you know, um, helping trees to helping your business to change management, like how to incorporate innovation successfully, how to do it. And, and these all sound, sometimes they sound like really dry topics, but we've made sure to get people that deliver it in a fun way to come to this, just like, you know, so that way, 
um, your podcast will be more interesting. Your, <laughs> right. you know, the people that are there listening will be more engaged, you know, um, so we're we're making we're we're growing it um, with your help and and having Pod Row we have some big plans there yeah having some cozy seating and and like a hangout area for you yeah. guys so yeah. um, that'll be an improvement from the concrete and the <laughs> right. table yeah. right <laughs> yeah we we have a banner and all kinds of stuff we have our own backdrops now we've got John Pajak with Profits by Pajak. Got Green awesome. Industry, Paul pa uh, Jameson, the Green Industry Podcast, of course, myself, yeah. the LCR Media Podcast, and we're all like getting all fancy now. We've come a, come a long, come a long way in a short amount of time. In a so. short time, yeah. Well, yeah. this is yeah, only in uh, yeah, we'll be in four months' time, I think. I think we're yeah. four months away, so it's coming up soon. Yeah, yeah. But well, but one 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 of the cool things too, though, is that um, you know, we. we we were able to really meet a lot of folks that at, at your event at sync live that like I've never met before that I don't even think we're even maybe at some of the other events that I've, I've been to. So it's, it's just a very unique setting, you know, to, to be able to get that caliber of folks, whether they be local to the Atlanta, you know, area um, or not, there's, there's, there's a lot of good people that I met and got on my podcast. I know, you know, Jeremiah and, and with the growing green podcast and, and Paul Jameson that we mentioned earlier had a bunch of them on as well. So some of the same, mm -hmm. some of the same folks, but we all kind of talked about different things. You know, you never really yeah. like, uh, unless we're really all focused on the same thing, like usually different topics start to come up with the conversations and you can really, you know, dive in and, and, and learn a lot from all these folks. Cause you know, we don't, we don't necessarily sit there and talk for like an hour with each person because it's a, it's a live event, right? So people are coming yeah. and going. So they're usually short and sweet, you know, 20, 20, 30 minute, you know, episodes, you know, uh, so that we can kind of get as many as we can and respect everyone's time, especially if they're going to be speaking or this or that. So, but we, we, we just, a lot of great people that, that were there, um, and then I, you know, look forward to being there again this year, uh, in addition to the, the, the speakers, obviously that the attendees too, and then all the different yeah. vendors that are going to be there. So just a lot of there, there's, so there's knowledge in all types of ways. Like, it's not just like a, a fun, cool thing to see or, Oh, pod row. That's cool. Like we're actually getting content to give back to the community to, within yeah. our industry, you know, like we're get, capturing these stories. We're learning from, you know, like Malcolm last year who like landscaped an Island, you know, like know. that's just, just, that's like next level stuff. You know, people are, <laughs> people are worried about, you know, getting supplies on their job site and employees. And he's like next level stuff there. He's got to fly people in, you know, know. And, fly and, and boat in supplies and, you know, all kinds of crazy well, stuff. And he has to think about like every bit of water he's using because yeah. he's pulling it from the sea and yeah. desalinating these and big, yeah these big yeah. machines to turn the ocean water into actual real usable water and I know yeah, crazy I mean yeah it does make you realize okay maybe I shouldn't complain about my logistics <laughs> exactly <much. laughs> exactly that's what we were saying like man no no complaining anymore about that jeez <laughs> Yeah, he might he, have a slightly bigger budget than you normally have, though. True, that might be another true, part of it. True, but 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 no, but but it's all relative because he might have a bigger budget, but that budget gets eaten up quick by the bigger expenses that he has, like it's flying true. people in and flying all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, it, and it's and well, lot. it's funny because um, one of the stories, or I say stories, and I mean it in the it's not a story. It's a, it's an actual project. Right. <laughs> it's an article that we wrote about his project, but um, it was in Mexico where um, it got hit by a, a hurricane, like a horrible hurricane that like wiped out a resort. Oh. And what's crazy is that um, the owner of the resort had people come in to say, which trees were dead and which were surviving and what, and they basically said they all need to be removed. And then Malcolm, they flew Malcolm in because they had heard about, you know, he does these kind of assessments <laughs> after hurricanes right. and he was able to save like 70% of them. Wow. Like through like, you know, looking at what had happened to each one, what the conditions were and what each needed to, 
you know, rehabilitate the That's palm awesome. trees and stuff. And, you yeah. know, so as far as, and I'm, I don't, I haven't read that article in a little while, but I, I want to say it was millions that he saved them. Because if they had to buy mature, you yeah. know, we're talking hundreds of mature palm trees and yeah. installation, you know, so again, you know, there, I think what's fascinating to me about that is that um, it's all in your perception and what you've seen that can be done. And, you know, if you've only seen, you know, okay, I, I don't know what to do except for replace all these, but you know, there are people that have seen a lot of cool things and have done things 10 different ways. And, you know, just hearing that there are options from people that are so experienced in the industry, you're like, wow, okay. Now, you know, I know that there's somebody that I could reach out to if I ever have a question about something like that. Like he's an expert in that area. And, right. you know, um, you know, just like when we interviewed you on the podcast earlier this year, you know, like now every once in a while, I'll think about your story about how you started in the landscape industry, you know, because something jogs your memory and you're like, wow, yeah, you know, a good thing to talk to Naylor about would be, you know, yeah, this or, you know, it, yeah, it's really the individual stories that um, help you feel like, you know, people and you know what where to go if you need some help on something like that, you know, and, and that's yeah. what's so nice about the industry is everybody is, you know, you do reach out to them and they usually do reach back out and they yeah. do answer you and everybody might be busy, but you know, they will, or they want to, right. want to help. And, well, that's, uh, that's the thing about social media and what I, what I call, and many of us call the online community is we're like the the bubble within the green industry you know within the industry uh, all together that is all about helping and sharing and responding and all that because there is the outer layer you know of that bubble that you know whether they're just too busy they're getting older their business is you know too too massive like they don't have time or care about social media or Mm -hmm. collaborating with anyone or even going to certain events, you know, maybe they have people for that, you know, like things like that. So those folks, sometimes it's harder to connect with and to, you know, sh get information yeah. and that they're just not really in the sharing kind of mood, you know? So those, those are like, or the, they don't do social media. Yeah, and then, exactly. Yeah, if they, they don't see the not, importance of it, they don't the really care. Yeah. So, yeah. The, the, so that's, that's why I like the social media part really helps to grow that sharing and networking and collaborating part of make, the industry it makes you feel closer even yeah. when you're not I, well if you think about it our industry is probably probably shyer people in general yeah because sure. you usually start working on your own um outside you yeah. know not it's not like we're all talking to people every hour of every day right. you know we're out doing more than we're talking yeah and so um it probably is you know a, fr a fraction of the the industry that's pretty shy and then i think social media probably helps open them up to to that community more Absolutely. than they'd be inclined to and i also feel like it, it was great to see so i went to your morning show mm -hmm. the first time i went Oh, it was called something different last it was year. Just was called it? Influencer Live. Yeah. Influencer Live. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, uh -huh. it wasn't called the morning show. But, uh -huh. Um, but you know, I thought, you know, if you don't know anybody and you show up there, um, and, but if you've connected online before and you're like, oh, that's that person and that like um Cody from Lightspeed um yeah, Lightspeed came Social. up to me and yeah. I was like Oh God, you're so much taller than I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it you connect before you get there and then when you get there, because otherwise it's really daunting if you're on your own and you walk into yeah. a room of five hundred people and you know, but it, it didn't feel like that because of right. you know, you guys building that community all along. And um yeah, yeah I think you even knew a lot of the people that were talking. You're like, hey 
Frank and what yeah. I don't know. I'm making up names. But. No, yeah, like the people that ask questions. I was like, hey, Mac, what's going on? You know, <laughs> like stuff like that. But or hey, Cornell. Yeah, it's Cornell Mac. But I don't know if I said Cornell or Mac. But um, but yeah, like that, it, it, that. That's a perfect example, because even if you didn't know anyone and didn't connect with anyone beforehand, or, or you did, but you, it, you know, you see a, a sea of like five, 600 people and you're like, Daunted. oh man, yeah, but, but you can still like sit down, you see, find like a couple of empty chairs and you sit down yeah. and people are friendly enough that they'll start talking, you know, and, and yeah. you can, can get to know people just from that event because that event is the micro version of what I'm talking about with the community. Like, you know, there's yeah. 25, uh, what was it, like 27,000, I think. I was reading that, reading the article that came out, OPEI, oh, talking yeah. about, about Equip. Yeah, attendees. Yeah. They, they broke records again. They broke last year's record to make a new record for attendees. So it's like 27,000, I think. So there's that many people that go to the expo, but, you know, 600 people go, go to the morning show, which is a lot for, for that space. But it it's, is. It's, a, it's like the most big, babyest fraction compared to the overall attendance so that that just means there's all these other people that either had something else going on yeah. or they could care less and those are the people that you're probably intimidated by being in a room with because they're maybe don't give the most friendly vibe versus the 600 people in the morning show all have that friendly vibe like hey yes yeah, oh yeah go sit down and then you know, oh yeah talk, you start no, talking it was to really you friendly know each yeah. Other. yeah so that's <laughs> That's so that's what that's my goal and my passion is to just keep growing that because it's like an extended version is it like an extended family for me you know and I I haven't I have I have a you've large, always wanted 500 yeah, yeah. siblings or yeah, yeah. <laughs> well I've, I've, I've never really had any extended I mean I technically have an extended family but I, I've been very distant with them you know I didn't really grow up with a whole lot of family I was an only child and all that so like I just I never really had, had that yeah so me I just kind of is that our yeah <laughs> yeah you is go. that what caused all that <laughs> maybe <laughs> We just want to connect and, and and be a part of family, you know, and have lots of friends. And that sense of community is just something that I've always, always, I guess, been driven towards, you know, finding and, and finding myself in the middle of, you know, and, and I'm a relatively quiet person, you know, like out and about, like, I'm not like a super bubbly outgoing person just out of nowhere. I mean, when I'm obviously supposed to be talking like this and I, I talk, <laughs> but I'm not, you know, you know, some people are like super like full high energy and they're you know the life of the party and 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 all that that's that's not me but like of course when i'm hosting an event or if i'm in at in an environment a surrounding where there's a lot of people that i want to talk to then then i'm i'm i'm, I'm talking to them you know especially when we have something in common and common themes and all that like I, I get more energy from that but in general i'm just more of a quiet you know person that just you know we just i just kind of do my thing and i'm not super hyper about it but, you know, I, I just like that, that whole community vibe and just being around people that, you know, like-minded people, we say that a lot yeah. as well too. Cause especially when I, when I first started out, what, one of the things that really, you know, um, drove me towards or attracted me to the community was that I didn't feel like I was alone, you know, all alone, like doing, yeah. doing my lawn care for the, you know, like I, you know, it's not like there's, there's more parents, you know, out there trying to help each other raise kids than there is, you know, lawn, lawn care and landscapers trying to help other lawn and landscapers, you know what I mean? Or, yeah. or at least 10 years ago. And now that seems like a whole lot more, obviously. I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of, you know, people out there all over the country and world combined, you know, that are watching and following along on social media yeah. and sharing their stuff and posting this and that, whether they're a big content creator or not, they're still finding their ways of connecting with people, going to these events and meeting people in person yeah. for the first time. And, and so, so if, if you don't have that network within your local area, you know, you can really feel alone, you know, like you're you just can. in a deserted Island, just out there all by yourself. And you're, every single struggle you're like man is this how it is like am i doing something wrong like is does anyone else experience this so social media actually connects you oh, and, and you yeah. see that other people are going through the same thing like hey i'm yeah. having employee issues too or hey i went to credit card on file i'm tired of chasing my money and you know all these different you know things over the years that uh, have become key topics that we'd share and talk about to try and help shorten the learning curve and and help our fellow you know lawn and land lawn and landscape 
um, business owners get through some of those challenging times and not feel like they're all alone. So it definitely, that's why yeah. there's so much energy when we go to these live events. Cause we're just like, we're just super excited to be around like-minded people and be like, that yeah. happened to you too. Or, Oh man, I yeah. can't believe, you know, they watched a video or heard a podcast and now they can talk to you about it. And they're like, Oh man, I can't believe that happened to you. Or, Oh, that was hysterical when you and Paul <laughs> did this and that, or, you know, it's just like a big community. Like we just have a good time and we learn and we share and we have fun all at the same time. So. Yeah. It just, you know, it's funny thinking back 15 years ago when I started my design and build company totally different it was right? very lonely yeah. yeah and you know you're figuring out how to do things and you don't know what to charge and you don't know and i think you know i could have if i wasn't so stubborn i would have uh, lost my business probably a couple times but you know i'm a bit stubborn but i i think i was too um i don't know if I don't know if I was shy. I was just like, I can do this. I can figure it out myself. But you know, it's funny. Once I started to meet other people in the industry in Scotland, I was like, why did I do, didn't I do this, you know, five yeah. years ago and, and not go through all that pain yeah. by myself without anybody to talk to. Like it, you know, it does, it actually, sometimes it's as simple as like, of course you're charging too little, you know, <laughs> right. like it's, it's like a, <laughs> yeah. of course, you know, raise your prices, do yeah. this, um, right. do it better, you know, um, or just, you know, if you have a rough day, you have somebody to complain to, yeah, or, you know, exactly. something like that. I think it's, um, sometimes it's, it's very simple. Um, but just knowing that, I didn't know anybody else in the landscape industry because I was coming from outside the industry. So, you yeah. know, I felt, you know, that I'd probably ask a lot of stupid questions maybe or something. I can't remember what, but, you know, I had barriers that kept me from reaching. Right. And um, yeah, I think you're, you're making it really easy for a community to come together. And that's what's so great about what you guys are doing. So, and I love that you're involved with our event and we helped, you know, in the first pod row start and yeah. uh, watch out in 2024, that will be a bit more plush. There you go. <laughs> Not, yeah. Now don't get your hopes up too high though. <laughs> <laughs> We're just, we're just a little more professional and branded looking, you know, that's, that's what it is. Instead well, of a couple of fold up chairs and sofas. tables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The morning show now that, 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 that's come a long way in a short amount of time. So that, you know, that's, that's high, high quality, high production there, man. They, they well, come all out. A so. nice spread too. I was like yeah. drooling all those donuts yeah. everywhere and coffee. Yeah. I came in with the coffee and I was like, why did I bring my own coffee to this thing? <laughs> yeah. Well, Paul's always telling everybody how good the donuts are. So I guess they gotta, <laughs> they gotta keep up with it now. They gotta, Hold, stay it stay up to those standards paul standards <laughs> it's like geez everyone expects it now we got to make sure we have good donuts every year <laughs> well, well that's part of the community <laughs> yeah. i was sad though i was you know talking to people and getting pictures and i saw them stacking them up and wheeling them out and everyone got a Did donut they? i was like oh you didn't no. get to you were supposed no. to fill your pockets huh? uh, yeah right <laughs> Well, Paul said last year, he like ran over to them. I was like, wait, 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 and grabbed a bunch of donuts off the tray. I didn't they get They should have time, put some so. in behind the stage for you or yeah, uh, they, it's, it's need to good. plan that in next yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to just go to the media room across the hall. That's what it is. I, for, yeah, I didn't even not as many donuts, not as many options, like, <laughs> but a nice quiet place to sit. <laughs> yeah, you could maybe um grab some at the start of the morning show, get go. somebody to grab some for you and put over yeah. there. And like... There you go. <laughs> A bottle of water or something. We get together. Yeah. 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 For sure. Oh. Yeah. Well, well, I'm excited. I can't wait. It's going to be really fun. I'm looking forward to having, you know, some of your good friends there on stage with us and um you guys have in pod row um i think it's being gonna be great and we're gonna have some social events too that we're gonna plan when it gets closer to the event so once you are registered for the event then we'll go okay do you want to join us here and there and you know after afterwards so 
stay Absolutely. tuned and um yeah we'll also be raffling off some some free tickets so uh that should be fun too so nice keep tuned on synced on air but Naylor, it's great to have you. Um, we're going to wrap things up so Amy can come on and do a, a Spanish intro as well and summarize what you've said. Let's see if she can do that in a few minutes. But <laughs> <laughs> she gets the hard part. Yeah. <laughs> but look forward to seeing you again in February. And Sounds thanks for being on the show again. Sounds great. Thanks for having me. And that's Naylor Talufaro with LCR Media. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.